So today I'm going to continue the series of life goals, and today's message, I want you to say this with me, is all in. Say all in. All in. Okay. I want to help you to apply God's word in a very felt need that I believe that we all battle with, or many of us battle with, and that's feeling like you're in. You know the word, the letter I in. See, the heartbeat of our city is to reveal Jesus in a way that you're able to experience revival in your heart. Okay, that you're able to have relationships restored first and foremost with God and then with others. And then that you would be in a place where you were experiencing life. That's the heart of the church. And what I know is when you experience that heart revival, when your relationships are restored with God and with others, and when you begin to come alive in yourself, then I know that I know that I know that you're going to be all in. Because God has done a work in your heart. You're going to be fully embrace who you are in Christ and then help lead others to know who Christ is as well. So this morning in in this message, All In, I'm going to share four things that we need to be all in, okay? And so the first one is we need to understand that we're all invited. The second thing that we need to know is that we're all invaluable, The third thing is that we're all, every single one of us in this room and those of you joining us online, we're all influential. And finally, we need to be all invested. So those are the four things. If you don't, uh, if you want to open up your Bible app, you can go to uh, the event page there and search Rev City and you're going to see all these notes that I'm going to share with you today in that message. So let's start with the first one, all invited. Say with me again, invited. invited. Not just some of you, I mean all of, all invited to say this with me. Say, all invited. invited. Come on now. Games later on. You got, you better know. We got time today, man. We can, you know. Okay. So I want you to know, and we want others to know, that every one of us, you online, you in this room, all are invited into the family of God. Would you believe that? Yes? You agree with that? Yes. Every one of us is invited. That, that, That could sound simple, but how many of you have ever felt uninvited? <laughs> See, to me, that's one of the worst feelings that you can experience is to be uninvited. You know, you're, you're scrolling through your, through your Instagram or your Facebook page and you see a picture and it's all your friends and they're hanging out together and you're like, hey, why wasn't I invited to that? Now, if there was food involved, I'm going to be ticked. Right? We don't want to be uninvited, right? We want to all feel that we're invited. I've heard this from many people over the course of the years that I've been in ministry where they felt like they were uninvited to the church. It absolutely blows my mind. I've had phone calls like this. People would call the church and say, hey, do you allow people with tattoos and nose rings to come to church? Do you allow people that have been divorced in your church Hey, I don't have dress clothes. Can I, can I come to church? I had one guy tell me, I've been kicked out of every church in this town because of the, in the town that he lived because of the tattoos that I, that I have on my body. Now, some of them were bad tattoos. But let me tell you something. He should have been invited to the church. He needed to be in the church. But he felt uninvited. Now, listen, if you've ever felt ashamed If you've ever felt unworthy or unwanted or uninvited, I want you to hear one of the greatest truths that's in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that Jesus invites the people that others reject. Jesus pursues those that religion says are not good enough. Jesus invites you today. You're invited to become a part of the family of God. Say invited. invited. Luke chapter 7, I told you to turn there a minute ago. And we need to read this story. Most of you have heard this story, but I'm going to share some things with you, hopefully, that will maybe pick your brain a little bit. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for your word. I pray that as we read your word today, Lord God, that you would open up our hearts and renew our minds that you would set us free from any area that maybe we have a mental stronghold or a bondage, Lord God. And that the word of God would become a seed in our spirit that would manifest and bear fruit now in this season in Jesus' name. Amen. Luke 7, verse 36 says, one of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him. He invited Jesus to his house. 
So Jesus went to his home and sat down to eat. And when a certain immoral woman, when you see that in the scriptures, I want you to know that's code for a prostitute. A certain immoral woman from that city uh, heard he was eating there and she, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. Then she knelt behind him at his feet weeping and her tears fell upon his feet and she wiped them off with her hair, her hair and she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. And when the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know what kind of woman is touching him. She's a sinner. Now, I love that line right there because he was thinking these thoughts and Jesus answered his thoughts. He never said this out loud, but Jesus knew what he was thinking. And Jesus answered his thoughts and said, Simon, I have a question for you. I have something to say to you. And Simon said, Good, go ahead, teacher. And then Jesus told him a story. He said, a man loaned him money about... Two people, 500 pieces of silver to one and 50 pieces to the other. But neither of them could repay him, so he kindly forgave them both, canceling their debts. Who do you suppose loved him more after that? And Simon answered, I suppose the one whom he canceled the larger debt. That's right, Jesus said. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, look at this woman kneeling right here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash the dust off my feet. But she has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss. But from the time I came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head. Yet she has anointed my feet with rare perfume. I tell her her sins, and there are many, have been forgiven. So she has shown me much love. But a person who is forgiven little shows only a little love. Then Jesus looked at this woman and said, your sins are forgiven you. Now, I don't know what caused her. The scripture says that she heard that Jesus was going to be in town. They were in Bethany. Now, I don't know if he had heard a she had heard a previous message. I don't know if she just heard rumor of the miracles that Jesus had done to raise people from the dead or all those things. But I want to, in my mind, in my heart, this is what I believe. She did hear a message from Jesus. And the message sounded something like this in Matthew chapter 11. Jesus said, come to me. Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I'm humble and I'm gentle at heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, easy to bear and the burden that I give you is light. What I believe is she'd heard that message. She'd heard an invitation from the Savior, Jesus. And then she also heard that he was in Bethany. And she says, I got to go. I got to go see this man who's invited me to be a part of who he is. We're all invited. And if you're here in this room and if you're there online and you've ever felt shame or guilt or felt uninvited, I want you to know you are invited to the family of God. You're invited. Say this with me, invaluable. You need to know, you need to know this. And I'm not just talking about this. So I hope you get it here. But you need to know this here. You are invaluable to God. You are uniquely valuable to him. Not because of anything that you've done or haven't done, but because everything that his son did to make you valuable. He died for you. You are valuable to the heart of God. You are his son. You are his daughter, a child of the most high God. And you're valuable because you're his child. You were created, listen to me, you were created on purpose for a purpose. You were created to make a difference in your world. As a member of the church, as a part of the body of Christ, you have value. See, it was difficult for people to believe and the reason the message is so hard to receive is because when we look at the church, 
We look at the people in the church. Well, a lot of times when we do this, well, I'm too busy. They probably got somebody else to carry that. Yeah, I'm not as good as they are at doing those things. I don't look like they do. I don't dress like they do. I don't talk like they do. I'm not as smart or talented as they are. So I can't, well, I don't have any value. And if you hear those things, I want you to know that's not the truth. It's a lie. You have value to the body of Christ. And while somebody may not have recognized it yet, I'm telling you right now, I'm calling you out. You're valuable. Years ago, Beth and I were, uh, we had just, uh, we had been youth pastors and we had been sent out to North Texas to help to lead a church that was struggling. And, and so uh, we'd been there for maybe a week or so and then we had a, we were having, they were gonna have a, a, a dinner for, to meet the pastor type of thing for all the men. And so all the men had gathered there and it was a small church, you know, so there's about 20, 30 men there and um, I'm there and we're getting ready to eat dinner and everything like that. And I'm talking to people, and, and one of the elders came up and said, it's time to eat dinner, Pastor. You want to go ahead and pray? And I said, no, let's let somebody else pray. So we all got in the, in the circle there, and we were holding hands, and I looked at an older gentleman. His name was Buddy, Buddy Lewis. He's gone to be with the Lord now. But I looked at Buddy. I said, hey, hey Buddy, would you be kind enough to pray for us? And it, you'd have thought I just electrocuted him. His eyes were just huge, you know, just super big and everything. And I thought, well, you're not, I'm not going to save you. So I just to- closed my eyes and just waited for him to pray, you know. And it was a long pause. And then he prayed a prayer. And uh, we, we, he said amen, everybody said amen, and, and the, 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 the line got started in, into the food. And so I'm sitting there, we're waiting in line, and, and Buddy comes in, and he's an older gentleman, about 70 in, in, at that time in, in those years. And, and he came up to me, and he had tears in his eyes, and he said, Pastor, did I do okay? And I said, yeah, buddy, you did great. It was short, man. Because when it's time to eat, it's not time to get right with God. We just got to pray. We got to get in line. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? I mean, amen? amen? Man, when people start praying long, I'm like, God, God, go. Oh, <laughs> hungry. So I said, it was great prayer, buddy. Thank you so much. And he looked at me, and his tears are coming down his eyes. He said, nobody's ever asked me to pray. I've never prayed out, out loud before. And immediately my heart just just exploded. I fell in love with this man. And the Lord just shared with me in that quick moment, he's never been invited to speak in his church. 70 years old, been going to church most of his life, and he'd never prayed out loud. Not too long after that, a little bit later on, Beth and I were invited to him and his his wife's home, B B and Buddy. And uh, I love this man tremendously. And we get to his house, and, and Buddy always wore overalls, you know, just kind of like those painted overalls with the hooks and everything on them, you know what I mean? And, and unbeknownst to me, I found out at his home at, while we're having dinner, he always carried a squirrel in his pouch, a live squirrel. Her name was Sandy. And so we're sitting there having dinner, I see the squirrel poke his head out, and I'm like, oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> And he's like, Eddie, she's never missed a message, man. She's heard every one of your messages. I'm like, you're bringing her to church? <laughs> yeah. All right, buddy. Come on, man. And uh, she saved. I didn't know. I, you know, we, we just, and, and so I was blown away by, by Sandy and, and Buddy. And, and then after we had dinner and dessert, he took us outside and he had horses. And he said, Eddie, my horses dance for me. And I was like, you're crazy. <laughs> And he said, watch. And he just looked at the horses and he started kind of swaying. He said, come on, dance with me. And the horses start dancing. They prance back and forth, back and forth. Gifted, talented with animals. Just, I mean, that squirrel was in his pouch, y'all. <laughs> what is the most special man that I've ever had in my life? See, I was a youth pastor. I was telling, my, I was telling Brandon, because Brandon looked at me and goes, Dad, you got me in the fields. I remember Buddy. And uh, he I was a youth pastor before we'd come to this church. And, uh, and, and so I had, my heart was big for the kids, man, for the youth. It was like, yeah, youth. Old people, yeah, okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> and God broke my heart when I met Buddy. And I love that man. I love his wife. She, they're an amazing, amazing couple. Here's what I realized. They had never been invited, felt invited. Come to church. Be quiet. 
And that time on, man, every time we got together, especially if it was a men's event, hey, buddy, you want to pray? Yeah, I'll, Pastor, I'm ready to pray. You just tell me when. You're invited. I was able to show Buddy that he was valuable to the body of Christ. That the gifts that he had, he could impart to others. Say invaluable with me. Invaluable. Turn with, turn with me to the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Listen to this story. Tell you how valuable you are. Verse 12, the human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews and Gentiles, or Gentiles. Some of us are slaves. Some of us are free. But we all have been baptized into one body by one spirit. We all share the same spirit. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I'm not a part of the body because I'm not a hand, that does not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear says, I'm not the, the part of the body because I'm not an eye, would it make it any less part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? If your whole body was an ear, how would you smell anything? But our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. If you're here, you're online and you're watching this, God has placed you just where he wants you. How strange a body would it be if it had only one part? Yes, there are many parts, but only one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can never say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. And the parts we regard as less honorable are those that we clothe with the greatest of care. So we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen, while the more honorable parts that do not require the special care. So God has put the body together so that extra honor and care are given to those parts that have less dignity. This makes for harmony among the members so that all the members care for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all the parts are glad. All of you together are Christ's body. Each of you is a part of it. Each of you is a part of the body of Christ. You're valuable to God. You're invaluable to each other. Let me see if I can give you a unique example, and I want you to participate now. I need you to be more vocal with me, okay? You may have heard this before, and if you have, play along and act surprised and stuff. <laughs> Who knows what a group of lions is called? Pride. Come on, there you go. Good. Okay, how about a group of cheetahs? In the first service, it was the Cheetos. <laughs> no, not Cheetos. A group of cheetahs is called a coalition. Wow. How about a group of crows? Um, yikes, right? A crow is a group of crows is called a murder. <laughs> That's <laughs> crows. Boom, we're out of here, you know. This is a good one. How about a how about a how about a group of vultures? A committee. That's why we don't have committees in the church that vote for stuff. Here's one of my favorite ones. You know what a group of rhinos is called? A crash. Isn't that cool? You know why? Because rhinos, a slow rhino runs about 28 miles per hour. A fast rhino, a black rhino, runs about 35 miles per hour. But here's the cool thing about that. They can only see 30 feet in front of them. <laughs> so when they're running, a crash is about to happen. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy, right? Okay, last one. What do you call all of us gathering here and those of you joining us online? What are we called? Family? Family? Body, body of Christ, the church, 
disciples? Yeah, we're, we're the body of Christ. Now, here's what's cool about, here's what's unique about the body of Christ. This is how invaluable that we are. Because Matthew 16, 18 says that the gates of hell will not prevail against us. You see, individually, we're all who we are. You're Eddie and Beth and, 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 and you know, Micah and all those things. But when we come together, we're the body of Christ. When, we, when the different parts of the body come together, we're not like those rhinos. <laughs> we're a crash, and not even the gates of hell are going to prevail against us. Each animal that you guys help me to name above has its own one name. But when you group them together, they take on a different identity. Let that sink in. When we're together, we're, we're different. We're, we're one person individually, but we're different. We have a new identity together. So when the enemy comes at you and says, you're not valuable. You, you, you ain't that much. You can say to him, no, no, no. God sent his son to save me. His spirit dwells within me. I am a child of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm an invaluable part of the body of Christ. And Satan, your gates are getting ready to fall because we got a crash coming. <coughs> Say this with me, influential. Let me make another statement here that I hope you receive. You need to see yourself as God sees you. Some of you need to replace your mirrors in your home. Because when you look in the mirror, you see somebody that's less than. You see struggle, you see shame, you see guilt, you see fear, you see all these different things. But all those things are the life that the enemy wants you to believe when you look in the mirror. I said it a minute ago, you are son and daughter of the Most High God. When you look in that mirror, you say, I am influential. I am God's ambassador. I have influence. Matthew 5.13 says this, you are the salt of the earth. But what good is salt if it has no flavor? It's lost its flavor. Can you make it salty again? It'll be thrown out and trampled underfoot. It's worthless. He says, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to the entire house. Salt and light. Jesus calls you and I the salt of the earth. Now, now for those of you who don't know, salt, salt is a preservative. It helps to preserve food, but it also makes it taste better. Pastor Robert at Gateway Church says this, and, and check this out. The way that salt remains, remains pure is that it stays close to the rock. It clings to the rock. And then the water washes over it to purify it. And that's why I think Jesus calls us salt. Because we need to cling to the rock. That is Jesus. And we need to allow the water of God's word to wash over us to purify us. We're salt. As believers, as salt, we cling to God's word and he washes us with the word. He renews our mind. He strengthens us. He encourages us. He disciplines us. He corrects us and we're purified. Then he calls us light, the light of the world. His light is supposed to shine in us so that it can shine through us. We're not to be hidden. We don't run from darkness. We dispel the darkness. Wherever we go, when I was a youth pastor, one of the pictures I gave to, our, to, the, to the youth were that we're like bug zappers. You ever seen a bug zapper in somebody's house? And you just sit there, and I, I just marvel. I just watch the bug. Oh, that bug's going to get it right now. And you see that bug just flying to that zapper. I was like, Zzz, dead. So I told the youth, we were like, you're like, you're, you need to be a bug zapper. Light up that world wherever you go. Go into dark places and light it up. And then somebody is close enough to you, bam, zap. They're dead and they get to get born again. Right? We're light. Sometimes we're going to attract bugs. Don't, don't, don't uninvite the bugs. 
Let them get close to you. Dispel the darkness around them. Be light. Be salt. Everywhere we go, we have an opportunity, a responsibility to season and to shine brightly with God's love and influence the world around us. We're influential. Say influential. In the book of John chapter 4, Jesus has an encounter with a Samaritan woman. Actually, the Samaritan woman has an encounter with Jesus. Jesus is at this well, and he's waiting. The disciples have to go get him some food, and he's waiting there at the well, and he, the Samaritan woman comes out by herself because she was a woman who had been married multiple times, and now she was just living with a man, so she couldn't come out with the other women. And she's there at the well, and Jesus asked for, her, for a drink of water. So the woman's about to get connected to the rock, and his word is getting ready to wash her and to purify her. And at the end of their encounter, she leaves the well and she runs into town and she tells everybody what's just happened. Look at this in John chapter 4, verse 29 and 30. Come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? So the people came streaming from the village to see him. Look at the influence she had. Verse 39. Many Samaritans from that village believed in Jesus because the woman had said, he told me everything that I ever did. What's crazy is a few verses later, they said, listen, we believe not just because of what you said, but because we've heard him, and now we believe as well. She had influence. A woman who was rejected and uninvited, who was looked upon with shame, who had to come out to the well by herself. But when she came out to this water place, this watering place, she got close to the rock and the water began to wash over her and it cleansed her and it purified her and it made her influential. And she went like that bug zapper and said, you gotta come see this. And they came out and zzz, psh, they met Jesus and they believed. You have influence. Your salt and your light. So season and light up the world that you're in. Amen? Amen. Last one here, we finished. Say invested. invested. We're all invested. We may not all be invested in the church right now, but we're all invested somewhere. If you believe in something, if you're passionate about something, then you're invested. Whenever your heart is following after something, you're invested. For the past 21 days in our house, we've been uh, fasting and praying, and hopefully you've been participating in that fasting and prayer time as well. And so uh, we've been fasting, Beth and I and, and, and Brandon, we've been fasting from social, our social media accounts, our personal social media accounts. Uh, we've been uh, fasting from certain foods uh, and certain drinks that we uh, enjoy, and uh, and here's the reason, because we set our heart uh, on laying those things down, those things that we're pulling on our heart, and, and we wanted to replace a renewed focus of more time with God and his word to begin the year. And this is something we plan to keep doing throughout the rest of the year, just fasting throughout the year and things like that. But see, now that the fast is over, uh, about to be over, I'm getting ready to invest in a big old bucket of chicken wings, man. Right? If I see a cow on the side of the road, dead cow. I'm invested heavily. Right? I'm joking, kind of. But see, we, we were, and, and these things in and of themselves are not bad. Foods is not bad. Amen. Uh, social media and moderation is not bad. But when, it's, when it has you, and so you having it, and you're consumed by those things, you're invested in the wrong thing. We need to invest ourselves in God, in his word. Matthew 6, 19 says, don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them, where thieves break in and steal. Jesus is telling his disciples, don't invest everything that you have and things don't last. And in the big picture, don't mean a whole lot. Instead, invest in God's kingdom. Invest in spiritual things. 
See, that investment, that can never be destroyed. It's never stolen from you. Your father who sees everything sees that when you invest in the kingdom, he sees that investment of time, of effort, of seeking after his kingdom first and his righteousness. And his word says, everything else will be added unto you. He will reward you when you invest your time in him. And here's why I believe that. It's because God created us to be blessed so that we could be a blessing to others. We pour out of the abundance of what God has given us. We don't hoard it to ourselves. Once we've invested in the kingdom of God, we invest in his kingdom, then we receive and we're blessed now to pour out again and again and again. It's not just storing, it's pouring. We invest in God's kingdom, God invests in us, and then we invest in others. You see the cycle. Acts 20, verse 35 says, and I've been a constant example of how you can help those in need by working hard, investing. You should remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Think about every area of your life, your time, your talent, your treasure. Where are those investments? In your time, are you leading? Are you uh, attending a life group? Are you serving? Are you giving your life away? Your talent, are you operating the gifts that God has given you, displaying those gifts for his glory to help build up the body of Christ? Your treasure, are you stewarding well the things that God has placed in your hands, your family and your finances, your health? Our life goal is to be all in, all invited. Everyone is invited to God's family. Every one of you is invaluable. Whether you realize it or not, you are a gift. You matter in the family of God. You're invaluable to the work that God is doing to build his church. All are inv influential. As a follower of Jesus, you're created by God to be that salt and to be that light, to shine brightly for God's glory. And you need to be invested, created and called by God to invest in what he's building here at Rev City and around the world. Given your life away to serve others with your talent, your time, and your treasure. There may be some of you here this morning, maybe you're joining us online, and you're in need. You're in need right now. Not just physical need, but maybe a spiritual need. You don't have peace in your life. You feel empty. You feel lack, lack of joy, a lack of peace. And maybe you just don't feel like you've ever fit in. Stand up with me if you would this morning. I want you to know that God is inviting you today into relationship with him. If you're here in this room, if you're there joining us online, God is inviting you to meet his son Jesus, to surrender your life to him. Maybe, maybe at one time you did follow after him, but it's been a long time and you're here today, not on accident, but on purpose, on God's intent to draw you back in today. Wherever you are in your life, God wants you to know he's here for you. He's inviting you in to meet his son. Maybe you've done some things wrong. Maybe you need to receive his forgiveness. You're listening today online and I want you to know that you have a good God, a God that loves you. He sees you as invaluable so invaluable that he sent his son to die for you and to raise again so that you could have a renewed life. If that's you today, with every, just bow your heads for me just for a moment. Close your eyes. This is a, bit, a bit of private moment between you and God. If you're here this, this morning, if you're there online and you say, you know what, I need to come back to God today. Or maybe for the first time, I need to surrender my life to Jesus. Would you put your hand up for me so I know who I'm speaking to this morning? 
Is there anywhere in this room? If you're online, then you can put the emoji sign up there and we have people that are online watching and they'll be praying for you this morning. Anybody in this room? I see you back there. Thank you so much for putting your hand up. Anybody else? Anybody else? I'm looking around here. Awesome. Awesome. If you're there online, I want to thank you. If you're here in this room, thank you so much. You're not raising your hand for a preacher. You're raising your hand to God and say, God, I'm coming back to you. I need you in my life. And here's what we're going to do today. We're going to pray together as a church family, as the body of Christ. We're going to pray together. We're going to pray with those people that have raised their hands. And the reason we're going to pray together is because we want you to know, first and foremost, we're here for you. We're a family. We're welcoming you in. We're going to partner with you. We're going to pray this prayer, but also to remind ourselves that the same grace that you're receiving today, we need, we need to receive every single day for ourselves. We never outgrow that grace. So you're standing here, you're joining us online. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I repent of all my sin and I ask you to forgive me. Today, I accept your invitation. Jesus, save me, change me, and give me a fresh start. I am all in. I know today I'm invited. I'm invaluable, I'm influential, and I will be invested. Thank you for your new life. Thank you for forgiving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give the Lord a clap off for those who raised their hands this morning? We're going to worship the Lord together today, and then Beth's going to come out and close us out. God bless you guys.